On the 1st of September, 2022, the longest pro Valorant map was played out. What happened next over the 1 hour, 46 minutes, and 49 seconds was a back and forth affair between two drastically different teams, resulting in multiple world records being broken in the process. This is the story of the longest Valorant map in history. Heading into the biggest Valorant tournament of 2022, North America's Optic Gaming and Indonesia's Boom Esports have had drastically different histories up to this point. For Optic, they're coming off of a win in Masters Reykjavik to start off the season, then finish third in Masters Copenhagen, solidifying themselves as one of the favorites behind a roster with no weak links. On the other side of the stage sat Boom Esports, a team with a lot of solid Pacific talent, but only made champions after fighting through a deadly last chance qualifiers. Just making it to their first international LAN was an accomplishment, and that's all they seemed to be cut out for, as they were placed in the group of death with Optic, Loud, and Zeta Division. This is projected to be an easy opening victory for Optic, as they make a push for another trophy. But of course this is Valorant, and crazier things have happened. After the first round of bans of Ascent and Icebox, Boom decided to take map 1 into a chaotic direction, choosing Breeze, a map that Boom played a few times during the LCQ, but never really looked that dominant against. Still, Optic didn't play it much either, making it a perfect pick for the underdog's Boom, as the element of the unknown for both teams makes the likelihood of throwing off the near-perfect Optic machine much higher. Still, when Optic did play Breeze, they were able to mop the floor against teams like Xset, as Crashies and Victor worked off each other as Entry and Initiator, dicing up even the best teams on sites. For Boom to have a chance, they needed to slow down this duo as much as possible while also avoiding the Headhunter of Ye with the pre-nerfed Chamber, a pretty much impossible task for any team at this time. And with Optic starting on attack, the clock starts what would eventually become the longest pro Valorant map in history. The map started like most others. Optic picked up the pistol and eco, and Boom wins the bonus. Boom is able to tie it up with an impressive stop on A, where they're able to take the lead in the next round during Optic's save. In the next rifle round, Optic goes back towards A site, but this time splits the attack with Victor hoping to put pressure on the defenders so that those in cave have a much easier time taking space on site. Along with Crashy's Sova ult, they're able to plant and wipe Boom out. Optic decides to push for the lead as they utilize both Victor's knives and Ye's tour de force. It works quite well, putting Boom down 3 to 5, with Flipsider isolated on site with zero information around him. Luckily for Boom, Ye peeks a little too early and Flipsider is able to take him out on a favorable angle. At the same time, the rest of Boom has worked their way through caves without any resistance, allowing them so much information and a great flanking position, which immediately pays off with Berserks taking out Marved as well as FNS who had the spike. At this point, the round is over and due to Optic's slow play to not continue the pressure towards B, it costs them the round and the lead. And with that, Boom is able to put on a little run, winning three more rounds off of some aggressive defensive plays. Optic is able to stop the streak with a successful B attack, but Boom Esports is able to close out their defensive side 8-4, putting the Reykjavik champions down early in such an important opening match, where while they wouldn't be eliminated from champions, they would either have to face Loud or Zeta, two teams that should be much harder to defeat than this rookie team. With their defensive side coming up, Optic needed one person to step up, the player thus far this season that proved they're one of the most technically gifted gamers in the scene. Ye. In a critical 3v3 during the pistol round, Ye got two kills to save them. This set off a six round win streak to start off their defensive side, with Ye picking up seven kills to only one death coming alive as Boom starts to try to play away from his deadly one-taps. Along with Ye, Victor continues to play Boom aggressively as Jet, going 20 and 12, with Optic turning their deficit to a lead of 2 at 10 to 8 before Boom could put up their first successful attack. But even that requires a good amount of ultimates being used. Boom needs to find another way to crack this solid defense by Optic quickly. The impressive defensive side will be a forgotten memory on their way to the elimination match if they can't turn things around. Boom decides to commit to A pretty early even after losing their entry, but t Bodle uses his wall to sneak forward on Pyramid where he's able to take out Crashies and Marved, which leaves only Victor with his op against all of Boom. Ye makes the round tight, but Boom is able to tie it up again. 
and after a 20 minute tech pause, Optic is able to answer back, taking the lead for the fourth lead change this map, off of a 3k by Ye's op. With three rounds left in regulation, this map couldn't be closer as Boom needs to start winning again, which are able to after a split attack to B in a Viper's Pit to secure the tie yet again. With the map all knotted up, both teams want the opening pick as both chambers hold angles with their ops. Ye decides to continue forward after fighting no contact in Elbow. Unfortunately for him, Famous is set up to take him out, giving them the much needed opening pick to help them move Breeze to map point. With Boom hitting B a lot recently, they decided to change up their attack by feeling out Optic and seeing if they can capitalize off of a mistake to win the map. But Optic is disciplined. Boom freezes as they're looking toward an A attack to hopefully finish their map pick off. But after feeling that A might be a little too hard to crack, they decide to quickly rotate to B with only 35 seconds left. This pulls Crashies and Ye a little bit, but after no attack comes right away, they're able to start to set up again at B. With time winding down, Boom pushes the site where Optic gets the favorable traits. Flipsider is able to plant the spike, but Crashy single-handedly holds off the remaining defenders for a 3k to push the map to overtime. With this being the first overtime map in Champions Istanbul, tensions were high for both teams. This is Boom's chance to take the lead in the series and possibly pull off a crazy upset in their first international match. For Optic, they're not expected to fall down in this map and could cause them the spiral if they aren't careful. In the first overtime, Boom starts on their favored side as they're able to pull off a clean retake thanks to a snappy 4k by t Bodle. but Optic is able to answer back on their own defensive round, pushing it to a second overtime. t Bodle continues to perform, getting two kills on A to move his total kills to a game high 28, which slows down Optic a little bit, but Optic are able to clean up the rest of Boom to move it to map point yet again. With the game on the line, Boom takes space towards B, hoping they can pull off a favorable execute, which they actually don't get as Optic holds strong, putting them at a 2v4, as there's so much time left for the spike as it had just been planted. But the final hopes of Boom are the two players that have been lighting up this map. Flipsider and t Bodel. Standing against four from Optic, and they slowed it down yeah. with the discipline. Well drilled, Teleport's that's ready. what the Optic players are. The angle's being watched to follow, though he does not expect it's crashies. Still holding it to the side. How are Boom salvaging this? Oh, another incredible play from the Viper. He gets down the pit as well. Marv just snuck his way in. Didn't get an angle. Half already, the damage is done to Bottle. What a maniac. Each shot connected for them as they pulled off this insane defense to push it to yet another overtime. Now with the map time over an hour 20, it's already one of the longest games in Valorant history, but we still have over 20 minutes left, and these final rounds of overtime just get crazier, as this is where the world records were set. Now onto overtime three, with Optic starting on the attack again, and just like last time, Optic pushes it to map point, even after t Bottle picks up the opening two kills thanks to some insane trigger discipline on Marv and FNS, pushing his total kills to a whopping 32. For the second time in a row, Optic pushed Boom to map point. With Ye buying an op with no armor, this could be a huge risk, especially as he is set up down hall, with Flipsider timing his approach right. Ye is able to get the first attacker, but is traded out, cutting off any rotation to support FNS and Marved on site. With the multiple different lanes they can attack from, they're able to secure the site yet again, pushing it to a fourth overtime. At this point, 30 rounds in, this would be a heartbreaker to lose and could affect the whole rest of either of these teams' tournaments. With Boom to start on the defense again, they need to find an answer to this unstoppable attack by Optic. Optic decides to move back to a play that has worked well in the past, with a split attack on A from mid, with Victor breaking up the sight lines towards Cave. But over the failed defensive holds of the last hour or so, Boom has adapted with Blaze King picking off Victor as he moves towards doors, letting Boom know exactly what Optic has planned to do, especially with Flipsider and Famous taking up so much space towards B site. They are able to take out three of Optic in mid after being stranded by Victor's death. Boom finishes the last two on site, giving them a chance to close out the map for the first time since the first overtime. At 95 minutes into the map, we move into a mind-numbing round 32, making it already the second longest map in Valorant history. And unfortunately for Boom, they still can't put the map away, even with t Bottle picking up his 35th kill of the map, putting him as the player with the most kills in a single map at an international land up to this point. Now onto an insane fifth overtime. 
Round 33. The round starts pretty slow, but Boom is able to successfully stop the initial attack towards B, as well as get an aggressive kill on F and S, who is holding the flank, as Optic couldn't find any good ways to break on his sight. With all plans out the window, Boom opts for a simple full B hit, hoping to overwhelm Yang Crashies who have consistently played B alone. Boom is pretty much making Optic have to pull off one of their signature clutches to keep the map going, and for Boom, they're willing to take that chance. First, a huge mistake by Ye as he's hit by the KO knife as Berserk moves on to site, making Ye a sitting duck where he's eliminated, putting Crashies all alone to hold off the plant, with the entirety of Boom clearing B. Berserks is able to clean him up without losing anyone, putting Optic in an almost unwinnable position to retake. Optic tries to do something to save the round, but Tebow finishes the longest map of all time with his world record 38th kill in the map. And with that, the map ended at 1 hour, 46 minutes, and 49 seconds to put Boom up 1-0 in the matchup. But unfortunately for Boom, this was their only map win on Optic, as the overtime map didn't really dampen their spirits, but rather warmed them up to Boom's tactics where they won the final two maps of Bind and Fracture with a combined round record of 26-8, completely demolishing this Indonesian team. One of the reasons why this might have happened was because of this play. But if they did no no! Oh no! Oh! Oh! Ace on the road! <laughs> No, that's the first ever in history. Even in ranked, you never get that. You've never even gotten that in ranked. Overall, the final two maps lasted just over an hour 10, more than 30 minutes shorter than Breeze took to complete. Boom ended up facing Zeta in the elimination match, where they're able to yet again win the first map, but crumbled in the final two, sending them home after only two matches in Istanbul. Since then, during this last season, a number of matches have come close, with actually the first map of the EMEA season going to 38 rounds, two overtimes more, but even that didn't even reach 90 minutes. When we look back at the longest map in Valorant history, we see a map that captures an era in pro Valorant. The old Breeze layout, a prime optic team being pushed to the edge by an underdog team, as well as a fragging performance that's only been surpassed once since then. This is a piece of Valorant history. Make sure you check out my last video all about the top plays on the old version of Breeze. It talks a lot more about the different important matches that happened on this map, and I know you'll like it. Also, make sure you subscribe as it really helps me out.